We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Lake Wales, Florida, and it is a privilege to get to visit again with Diallo Burks, who is the head football coach for the Warner Royals. Coach, always a privilege to get to visit with you, sir. And I want to talk football as uh, here we are now, 2024. We're here, 2023, not a bad season for the Royals, four and six, as you all made a three-game improvement from the season before. Tell us a little bit about last year. Well, it was it was one um, where it was my second season. And so we really wanted to focus coming in with the experience that our guys had. Um, we wanted to propel them to the next level. And so we're still working out through uh, some glitches, some systems, you know, new coaches being hired, um, you know, a slew of new guys coming in. So we had to mix in that whole pot together. Um, to make it work. And so what guys did, we focused on a lot of the details of um, of the game, um, just how we approach the game, how we play in the game, um, offense and defense just being solidified in those two spots since we had two different coordinators, two new coordinators to come in. So new systems that guys had to learn. So we just made it simple for them so that they could go out and, and play. And, uh, you know, like I say, from the – you're, my first year, you know, guys were a little older um, with a mixture of, you know, some some new guys that came in really um, allowed us to to make that leap forward. I know it's been a busy spring for you, both on the field, off the field. You have a lot going on right now. Were you able to, you know, take the spring then and, and take it a little bit further with that implementation of, of the new things on, on both sides of the ball? Yes, sir. We wanted to fo focus on this spring, which we started um, late January. We wanted to get an early start. We wanted to see how that um, schedule transition with the um, latter part of the year where, you know, our guys could have time to focus on finals and, you know, just get a little, little, little out of brief. So how we set it up was we did our spring um, January 26th through um, February 17th, where we had our spring game. And then for the next six weeks, what we wanted to do was focus on what we call skills and drills. And that's just the overall skill development of every guy. And so all it is is individual drills for an hour and a half on the field mixed in with a little bit of special teams where um, our coaches could really take our time. We're not pressured at all, and we can talk through – the, the skills of being a wide receiver, you know, everything that goes into it and work those little fine points um, because that's what allows our guys to grow. So we wanted to really focus on that. We had, you know, both coordinators coming back, so we did not have to learn a new system. So the system is in place. Now it's just finding the fine-tuning the guys to be able to fit the system and where we want to take them. So that was our spring, and that was our focus. And – you know, from a staff perspective, we loved it. We love being able to just, you know, coach footballs in the fine details because when you're going through a practice schedule, everybody wants all the individual time, but we don't have a lot of individual time because we got to get to the other team components, you know, of practice. And so uh, for six weeks, we were able to do, you know, just bona fide individual work with our guys. Um, and it, it's a specialization that the guys really took to uh, because uh, the group in a whole, we could break the group down. So we could work with two or three guys individually um, for a certain amount of time and we could really focus on and they could have our eye. And so in their mind is, is like individualized training. So that's pretty much what it was. And like I said, this is a format that we will continue to go through. I like that. It's an interesting take too. I mean, really early on with that, but it, uh, if it works out, then that's absolutely fantastic. Well, you have a, you have a number of players uh, returning on your offensive line. Have some transfers too, as well. Let's start talking about uh, talking about your offense a little bit. And as opposed to going to, straight to the quarterback, we often do that. I mean, you know, headliner and quarterback. I know you got some competition there too, because it's going to be a new person at signal caller, but he's going to have to have that line in front of him. Uh, Eric Gonzalez, Justin Butts, uh, talk about Anthony Verber, Joshua uh, Jeffries as well, Jabari Martin coming in for your offensive line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one thing we wanted to really do was um, 
you know, get some size up front. Um, our coaches have have done a good job of going out and 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 finding that. Um, well, first of all, I want to talk about the guy that's going to be leading their group first because he will be new. Um, Coach Jonah Smalls transitioned to another position um, who was great for us, great young coach, and I knew that I was going to have a problem holding on to him. Um, and so we have Emerson Martin that's coming in as our offensive line coach, and then Coach Martin um, is one who – uh, played in the NFL um, for for a number of years um, and also coached um, on the professional level as as well. So he will be leading leading those guys. Um, technician, uh, you know, he understands how to talk to them and get the best from them. So we're very excited by having Coach Martin um, on board. But we do have a slew of new guys that's coming in, as you mentioned. And um, the main thing that we really wanted to do was beef up the size um, up front. And it's tough to find those guys, you know, with the portal and everything going on. They are a hot commodity first, uh, those O-line and D-line. And so we wanted to uh, make sure that we had our ducks in a row uh, or that that was going to be, you know, the protector of our offense. And so we've done a really good job in that that area. You got to win in the trenches. I mean, and, and it doesn't matter what level it is. You you have to be there on on that line. All right. Well, that'll lead me to the quarterback then. And I know you're going to have a new person as a signal caller for this season, and among those who will be in the mix for that competition is, is uh, Isaiah Rodriguez. And I know that you've also you know you're bringing in some other folks too. Yes, we uh, brought in um, Isaiah actually mid year. He came in in January, so he has not played a game for us yet. Um, we're also returning behind those um, at that position. We have Lyle Bennett. Uh, we also have Thomas Aponte uh, that will be coming in. Evan Ashbach, who um, started a couple games for us last year, he transitioned um, out of the program. Xavier Holiday, who shared some time as well um, as a starter, uh, graduated. So we have a um, couple guys that's coming in and. We do have a key piece that we're, we're, we'll name at a at a later time, but it's going to be a huge deal uh, behind the center, and it's going to be highly competitive. All right, we'll we'll be there for that, Coach. We we want to be able to break news here and, and talk about what Warner's doing. So uh, we'll we'll stay on board on that one. Uh, move over to the running back. You have Clyde Holland as a returner for you. Uh, also back there in the backfield, you may be able to use Sean Pryor, Jackie Boudre. Yes, yes. Clyde is going to be a really good one for us. Um, he's been here with me since day one um, when I got here. And just seeing the growth in that young man and where he is now, this is going to be his time. Um, he's working every day on his craft. Um, he's sending me videos. Um, he is focused and ready to go. And like I said, uh, running behind those guys up front, we will look for a stellar season from from Clyde to to lead our group. But also, like I say, you know, we have a couple more as well uh, that's going to be with him that he's going to have to compete uh, for the job. And so that's one thing we want to do is be highly competitive at each position. So, um, you know, they know nothing is given here in this program. You got to work for it. But he does have a, a, a huge uh, upside to him because of, you know, where he's came from. He's been here. And like I said, we're looking for big things for him to lead the group. Uh, wide receivers, a, a number of them coming back. Some of the names that uh, may, be, may be mentioned, Javion McKay, Ryan Screen, um, Jeremy Benjamin, Benjamin, Kendrick Burrell, and you have some transfers as well. I know Anthony Popoff, one of those that is is high on your list. Uh, Dante Quick, uh, also another transfer coming in. Uh, Deontay Marks, who went to Florida right out of high school yes. and transferred in from a Big 12 school in UCF. Yes, yes. Um, we we have coming back. We have Evan Safeman um, and um, Adrian Glasgow, who who are the premier leaders in in the room. But um, we have a number of new guys that that will be joining them as well. Uh, some young guys we call them the the young gunners. Um, these are guys coming right out of high school, and what. Um, we're able to do with these guys is because of the portal. Um, 
you know, we were able to go in and get some really good high school guys that we wouldn't normally be able to get. And I can tell you a fact, I know three guys out of this group had division one, one, one offers. Um, but for some, you know, thing or another, uh, we were able to go in and, and, uh, you know, sway them to, to come our way. Um, uh, and so they are going to be really good. Uh, also, Deontay Marks, Cameron Miller. Deontay was a four-star athlete when he came out of high school um, and then went to the University of Florida. He stayed for a year, then transferred to, to UCF. So we're really looking at him to come in and, and be a, um, a big staple um, in that wide receiver room because he is an older guy. That was one thing that we needed to – to get done in that room was get older. We had a lot of young guys, a lot of young guys. And so we needed some, some, uh, we needed some spice in the room, you know, from, from a leadership purpose, um, guys who've been, you know, in the thick of things. And so you add that in with those younger guys and um, that would give them the ability to, to develop and grow, um, that the pressure is not on them to come in and win games is to be the best that they can be. So um, we've done a really good job in that area. I've been heavy in that area because I am a receiver. And so I'm very particular on who I bring in and I let them know, know that day one. Um, <laughs> if, if, if your mindset is not to, to play on Sundays, this is the wrong program for you, especially at this position. So um, just let that be known that not just our room, but the, you know, the entire group, the entire team. And so that's the mentality. But this group is going to be a special group. Well, I'm glad I'm glad to hear it's going to be a special group, Coach. And and, and I, I like that they have to know they're, that they're special to you just because of the position, and, and it makes a difference. We're here on Midwest Sportsnet visiting on the summit today with Coach Diallo Burks. We're speaking about the Warner Royals and looking ahead to 2024. Coach, let's move over to the to the defensive side of the ball, and uh, let's go back to the line first, all right? Devarius Robertson on that line for you, Trayvon Riggins, uh, who transferred in, and uh, you, know, you had some four-stars that uh, you're going to be uh, on your roster this year. Uh, Riggins one of those, and uh, came on Pope as well. Tell us a little bit about the line and maybe a couple more. Well, it, it starts with, with the little man in the group, little man uh, – uh, all conference, all conference, Sun Conference, um, NCCA, All American, uh, Ethan Anderson. Mm -hmm. So you have to give it to him as a freshman. Uh, and so, with, with with the D line and what Coach Todd was wanting to do was we wanted to 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 get bigger and stronger. And so we um, went out and we've got some 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 very athletic guys. And so we know. Um, offensive line, defensive line, like I say, those guys are hard to find. So we spent a lot of time in putting this group together. And so we're going to be explosive up front. Uh, we're going to be able to establish another line of scrimmage. Um, that's the mentality. And turn and burn when, when the ball is gone. So it's going to be high effort, high motor, um, getting after it up front. And so we do have those guys um, to do it. Trayvon Riggins, like you say, um, was a four-star recruit, came out, went to the University of Illinois um, with Lovey Smith. And when Lovey um, and his staff was, was was let go, he transferred to to Jackson State with, with, with Prime. And so when Coach Prime transitioned to Colorado, he did not take him. And so he was kind of left stagnant, and that's when we came and, and, and picked up the piece. And so um, a lot of times – you know, these guys now get in those those big atmospheres and a lot of them get get kind of lost in the shuffle. You I get, know. You get here, um, you know, in a market to where I told them, I said, you know, here, you all you got to do is just focus on football, you know, because that's the biggest thing what they want to do. They just want to play. When we all know the pressures of the higher level uh, with the NILs and, and those things, but here um, – they don't they don't have a lot of that. So it's just pure D football that they can play. And that's what they want to get 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 back to. So we were able to pick up some some really good 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 guys, um, you know, because of that that piece. And uh, we're looking for some from great things of those guys up front. By the way, I I don't want to uh I don't want to skim past Anderson. I mentioned him as well. Six and a half stack six and a half sacks last season. You were talking about his 
uh, postseason accolades too. So great place to start. Uh, always, I, it's always interesting when you talk about uh, someone on your defensive line is the little man. So that uh, <laughs> so he, he's, he's 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 undersized, but his, his heart is real big. And so I, I watched him every day. I looked at him every day, and I'm like, man, how did this guy get it done? Uh, you know, he's he's low to the ground. He's fast, and you know, he has a un yielding spirit to not quit and so when you mix that in when you get a guy that's, that's not gonna quit he's gonna keep coming and keep coming he's bound to make something happen and so with with him he needed that that piece you're talking about from a confidence standpoint that hey he's looking at himself he's hearing what everybody else is saying but yet he's defying all odds and so now you surround other guys around him that's going to command a lot of attention those numbers should double. And I told them that that's the that's the goal for those numbers to double. If they don't double, then we'll we'll talk about uh what we're gonna do after. But that's the challenge to him, and he embraced it, he loved it. And you know, for for us to set those type of numbers for him just really says what we think about it. And yeah. so we don't do that for anybody. You know, that's one thing that you know people know about me. I'm not gonna be unrealistic unreal- with you. Um you know, and I'm going to tell you the truth and how, how we feel about things. And I feel that he can be a 10 sack guy, you know, with what, what he's brought to the table by having other guys, like I say, that's going to command a lot of attention. That's going to free up someone. Someone going to have double digit sacks. <laughs> someone through there. I understand. Uh, Coach uh, linebackers, Colin Whitehurst, uh, Milton Smith, Lonnie McCall, take us through somewhere there in, in your linebacker core. Yes, yeah, so all new guys. We have Damon Rywall. Um, that's coming back. He will be a, a, a grad guy. Um, also, Gerald Blue um, were, were guys that um, that anchored us last year at that position. But like I say, we won't be highly competitive. So we're, we're bringing in a lot of a lot of guys that can play. Um, and so we're very structured in the middle. Coach Bethel um, leading leading that group. Um, you know, we're we're going we're going to be pretty good. We're going to be pretty good, and we're looking for big things out of out of that linebacking core. Ones who can uh, mix in with the defensive linemen, who can rush the passer as well. Um, those blitzes get down to hurry, and those guys who can drop back in coverage too and help our secondary out um, to control, control the middle, uh, middle holes in the defense. Well, let's talk about secondary then. Go to the secondary, Sajir Lane, Roger Roman, uh, Kendrick Washington, among those, another transfer and Demarcus Densmore coming in. Yes, um, coming back, we had uh, Kelsey Mintz, um, who was a really good freshman. Um, I called him a super freshman. Um, you know, he was one that should have been voted um, All Conference, but he did. He did not get it. He had some, you know, development to go. He came on um, real strong towards the end of the season. Um, and so if he was started off that way, no doubt he'd have been been all conference. And so we're, we're looking to add some more pieces in the back with him. We have uh, Demarcus Densmore, who's transferring from from LaGrange College. And that's where we came from before um, we was here. So we know all about him um, as well and what he can do, um, along with the other guys, Sajir and, and um, those guys. So what we're going to do is in the back, we're looking for – you know, a solid unit, guys who can play together, who understand um, the coverages and where they're supposed to be. Um, and also guys who are long and length that can run, um, that can play man-to-man and, and keep those receivers off at a distance, um, you know, when we're pressing them to to really be able to move and, and stay with them. And and so you add that in, like I said, with the, with the motors of the defensive line, defensively, you know, we're, we're, we're looking to really get after people. I understand that coach. Well, I, I, I move over to special teams and you've, you've mentioned more than once, there's going to be competition. That's another facet of the game where there's going to be competition, uh, through the summer and into the falls in your special teams. Yes, yes, yes. We have a couple kickers, um, that's, that's coming in specialists. We have, um, Lucas Davis, um, that's going to be big. We have, um, Dylan Hubbard, that's uh, actually returning back. Um, he and uh, Matthew uh, Cornegie, um will be two of our returners, but we're adding in Lucas Davis. Um, 
Drew Owens as well. Um, and we have a female, Mackenzie Hart, that, that, that we've added to our roster as well. So it's going to be a, a, a interesting training camp. Undoubtedly. And it's, and it, and it's going to get some attention. I'm sure. Uh, definitely. We want to follow that story as well. All right. Well, I, I, let me ask you this before we get to the schedule and, and uh, it's just right around the corner, May coming to an end now. And, uh, you all get things underway, a true week one start to your schedule. I, I enjoy listening to you online. I, I've seen some of the videos that, that you've done promoting the university, but uh, also talking about, you know, the kind of young men that, that you want to have there, but also what, you know, what God can do for them in coming and being a part of your program and what they can learn in their lives. Can you talk about that a little bit and, and uh, just, you know, promote Warner a bit? Oh yes. This is a, um, this is a fabulous place. Uh, you know, it's, it, I tell everyone it's a hidden jewel. Um, we're, the, the thing that I really like most here is the freedom. Uh, when, when you go to work and you're putting in uh, your best efforts and, you know, when, when, when the higher allow you to work, you know, it brings about a certain freedom that you just can't explain. And that's what they give me here. Um, and they know we're going to do it the right way. We're going to do it in accordance to, to their standards and the mission of, of, of the school, but they give you freedom to, to, to work. And, and so we make sure that we're staying in uh, conjunction, like I said, with what they want to do, but we want to uplift this place and, and, and the staff and I really um, hone in on, on bringing in guys that's going to um, modify or exhibit that, that, um, that worn away. And so God is the leader. Um, of the lives and we tell them, Hey, we take you from where you are and we want to elevate you into that, that premier, that premier person, whether we're, you know, on the field, we want to be elite academics. We want to be elite. And then in the community, we want to be elite as well. And so, um, you know, just walking God's way, living in grace and, and making sure that we're, we're, we're following him. And so that's, that's what we want to do. Well, Coach, talked about week one, then gets underway September 7th, and you are on the road at D1 Stetson. Get a week off, then you're back at home, first time, taking on D2 shorter. Uh, you finally get an NAIA game, but you have to wait till the month of October to actually get that in. And then from there on out, it is a Sun Conference schedule from, from there on through. So uh, talk a little bit about your schedule. Yes, we um... – Wanted to, you know, really put ourselves in a position where we want to be, you know, we want to play competitive teams. And so um, Coach Young at Stetson, um, that's a kind of a, um, a contest that they've been playing before I got here. And so we wanted to have, um, you know, a, a, a team like that on the schedule uh, to give our guys, you know, that that Division One feeling. And so um, – so we got them. We also have Division Two shorter that will be coming um, to Lake Wales. Um, here we'll have them at home to play, and then we'll go with um, um, our conference schedule. Yeah. And so we did have another game scheduled that canceled out. So now we only have nine games, and so to fill some of those spots, we have um, some prep schools that we're going to allow some of our JV guys to, to play in um, as well. So big schedule. It is a big schedule. It is that. And, and it should be, you, you talked about a challenging schedule. It should be just that by the way, October 5th, Florida Memorial, the folks from Miami garden make the, the trip up that three hour trip North. And that's when the sun schedule gets underway there for you all at Warner coach Diallo Burks. Thank you so much for taking time with us today. We're going to follow the Royals this season as we did last year and, and will again. And, and uh, we're excited to see what you're doing in year three of the program there. And uh, we appreciate your time today. Success to you all this season. Thank you so much for taking time with us today on the summit. Joe, really appreciate you, you know, and, and you giving us the time to, to really put Warren University um, program out there. So I really appreciate what you're doing. 
like I said, this is year two for us. So uh, we're going to year three next year. Okay. So we really appreciate it. Uh, you know what you're doing to to help us out. Thank you. Thank you.